Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a best of three series of Professional Starcraft 2. Today it's time for a Protoss vs Zerg between two absolute channel favorites. Spawning here in the bottom left hand corner of the map Ice and Chrome. That's map number one in this best of three series playing with the red Protoss probes from the United States of America and already sending out one of those bad boys across the map. We're looking inside of the main base of Neeb. Now, I don't think that this is necessarily going to be cheese. This is one of the things that a lot of Protoss players have been doing again recently against Zerg. I think that this probe is just sent out with one mission, and that is to block that natural expansion from the Zerg from coming up. Look at that. The drone already forced right now to move on over to the third base instead. His opponent in the opposite corner playing with the blue Zerg drones from Canada. She's also an absolute channel favorite, and she goes by the name of Scarlet. And actually, her nickname right here, it says Adapted. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. It is going to be a gateway here on the low ground for Neeb. So this is just him being a little bit of a jerk. And I like this. I play quite a bit of Protoss myself as well. And whenever you can take control of the game early on, it, it feels kind of good, you know? I mean, Neeb knows very well when that spawning pool is going to finish up. And if it's a hatchery first, when this probe needs to get home. And up until that point, unless he gets surrounded by a bunch of workers, he's going to be free to roam this map, right? To be an absolute jerk. So already forcing a little bit of lost mining time right there as well with that drone. And he's probably going to continue mining here for a little while longer. Now, he's never actually letting the mining finish. He's just making sure that the drones start shoveling around right here inside of that mineral line. Look at this. There's not much else to do anyway in the early game. And this is just one of those things with which you can completely frustrate your opponent. So first off, forcing the third base. And then secondly, just being a jerk right here with that probe inside of the main base. Now, the spawning pool, it finishes up right around the two minute mark. And I wouldn't be surprised if Neep lets it finish up at that point. And then he goes home with a little bit of a trophy to show to his Protoss probe friends. There it is. Spawning pool's done. He hasn't actually seen that, but he knows the timing. And there we go. <laughs> Alrighty. Now, we'll see shortly here what the tech root of Neep is going to be. As you may have noticed, the clan tech right here from Scarlet says Adapted. Now, I don't know if that's a bit of a mind game. I have a tendency to look into those kind of things a little bit too much. Here we go. What's it going to be? I guess a Stargate. It has to be a Stargate. There we go. It is going to be a Stargate opener. So, Stargate, of course, very popular. Um, it was the most popular opener for a very, very long time, and for good reason. Um, obviously, it hasn't gotten nerfed either. As a matter of fact, I guess the Queen's got nerfed a little bit. They have just a little bit less anti-air range. So these days, technically speaking, I would say that the Stargate opener is a little bit better um, than, uh, than the Adept opener. I mean, you know, when you compare it on paper. That being said, at the professional level, Adept openers right now against Zerg are extremely popular. It's one of the things that a lot of Protoss players have been going for recently, and it can be quite difficult to deal with. I've seen Zerks absolutely shut it down without any problems whatsoever, and then it looks like it's one of the worst build orders ever. And then I've seen games as well where a group of adepts kill like 20 workers. And it's against like top level Zerks, right? So it's always a little bit difficult to actually say, um, you know, if it's a good strat or not. At the very least, it seems like a lot of the Protoss players are very, very fond of it. And I would not be surprised if Neep is going to bring that build maybe in game number two in just a little bit as well. Alrighty. Now, great scouting here, by the way, by Scarlet. She had two little spots right now to know that it is going to be a Stargate opener. Before she saw the Stargate opener, she probably already knew that it was. So the Robotics Facility and the Twilight Council are both 100 gas each. However, the Stargate is 150 gas. So when this Overlord arrived on the other side of the map and saw that the Cybernetic Core was finished, it could also see that there was nothing upgrading inside of the Cyber Core yet. Now the Warp Gate upgrade is 50 minerals and 50 gas. Um, so basically, you know, when you get there, you get to the other side and you know your opponent is not researching anything in that Cyber Core yet, it's pretty much always going to be a Stargate opener instead. So the Spore Crawlers are done. I mean, she confirmed it as well just now with an Overlord that's going to have to pay for that information with its life. A couple drones here being picked off. An Overlord will go down as well. And this is very conventional, right? And this is one of the things that I guess Protoss players kind of expect. I mean, three drones is it's decent, right? It's pretty good. The problem is that Zerk is just going to overmake workers. Zerks over time have gotten ridiculously good at dealing with this kind of early game pressure. Basically shaving off as many little seconds here and there as they possibly can. Scouting out perfectly what it is that the Zerk is going to go for. And they will be able to pretty much always get into the mid game with a slight advantage. 
when it is against the Stargate opener. So let's see if he maybe can get a little bit more damage done. I, I think, honestly, that's the reason why Stargate, if... It's not really, like, it's not fair to say that it's fallen out of favor, but... Um, it's just a little bit less popular over the last couple of months. It just seems that Zerg players have gotten way too good at just, you know, playing exceptionally greedy against this kind of stuff. Now, I like this. Couple of depths here, at the same time moving out as well. Looks like, um, Neep ended up killing... Oh, this is actually very, very important. Neep ended up killing, uh, the Zerkling that was on that, uh, on that watchtower. And right now, that does mean that Scarlet sees that two adepts are coming up. That's really, really important, because... When the queens are occupied inside of the main base, right, to defend against those uh, those oracles, yeah, the adepts could have potentially done a lot of damage over there at the third base. I've seen them kill like 10 workers. It's very, very easy to accidentally mess that up. Triple oracle, one phoenix. Certainly a potent uh, or, or a good, good opener, I suppose, but yeah, not really a whole lot of damage has been done so far. Great defense up to this point by Scarlet. Okay. I mean, this is annoying though, right? Yeah, it's starting to really uh, hurt a little bit here and there. Anyways, one big advantage that Protoss has when they go for this build order is that this third base will pretty much go up completely uncontested. So already, Neep is now transitioning towards the Robo. He's got the Forge coming up as well. He's got the Twilight Council. And this is now looking like a very stock standard macro game. At this point, we're looking at the Zerg player. Okay, so Protoss in the mid game, I've talked about it at length in the past. Protoss is a little bit limited when it comes to their options, right? So it's pretty much always going to be Archon Immortal Zealot based, right? Usually into Psionic Storm a little while later as well. Zerk has a couple of different options. Spire has become really popular. Now, I actually know, I don't know if Neep actually wants to commit here. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Nah, this is just a little bit of pressure. Just looking very threatening, forcing some units here out of the Zerk. Okay, I like this. This is something that we don't see all too often. So I think what this is, is a Swarm Host Nidus opener from Scarlet. It was very popular a couple of a uh, couple of years back. We saw it a lot back uh, back when it was very abusable, and then Blizzard had to come in and nerf it. Um, basically, they uh, they made the Nidus Worm a little bit weaker. But I think what this is uh, is a little bit of Nidus Swarm host aggression, and there we go. It is indeed gonna be the case. So I love this. I haven't seen this in a very long time. We'll see what ends up going down here and how well Neve is gonna be able to defend against it. Alrighty. So here we go. First Nidus Worm is coming up. Notice Scarlet can go into the third base, but she can also send those Locusts to watch the main if she wants to. So this is a really nice position. There's already a Zerkling over at, I guess, the base, like, north of the natural right now, ready to throw up one of those Nidus Worms as well. A couple of Roaches and Ravagers threatening to go in for a bit of a push. Oh, and oh my god, look at this Neep. Actually, uh, feeling a little bit cheeky. Wanted to put down a Probe over there and accidentally found himself a couple of Swarm Hosts. Ooh, nice. One kill. Not bad at all. There we go. Second night is Worm coming up a little bit further up north. And so far, the defense by Neep has been absolutely impeccable. He's gonna have to start playing Night is Whack-A-Mole right now. He needs to knock down all of these Night is Worms as they pop up. It's very, very important right now. So generally speaking, if I can talk strategy a little bit more, I feel like I've been talking strategy the entire game long. Anyways, I guess that's all right, right? Nobody, nobody really minds that. Um, generally speaking, these kind of build orders, the one that Scarlet is playing right now, are absolutely fantastic if the protos can be left below about 150 supply, right? So, the bigger the protos army becomes, the easier this becomes to deal with, because at some point, protos can split up their forces and take another base. That's exactly what Neep is doing right now. So, if Scarlet does not get some damage done soon, this is actually not that great of a, an opener here whatsoever. Now, every single time, though, that these locusts do land, they're gonna get more value. So you're looking right now as a Protoss player, or sorry, as a Zerg player, to keep that Protoss army as small as possible. Now every single time though, that these don't really kill much, um, a new warp in is going to be added as well, right? At the same time, actually a couple of Zealots made their way across the map. Another Nidus Worm now coming up over at the fourth base. Looks like the Prism did pick up one of the Zealots, but yeah, two of them are going to end up falling here inside of the natural of the Zerg player. At the same time, small little push over here. Nicely done once again by Neep. I'm very impressed with the way that Neep is playing this. This is very solid defense. As he grows, right, as this Protoss army becomes bigger, he's gonna have a much, much easier time dealing with all of these Nidus Worms. Couple probes going down, but that is not the end of the world. It's very easy to accidentally lose a Nexus against this. <laughs> so beautiful defense so far by the player from the United States. He's already going into a Fleet Beacon. Alrighty, I like it. Fleet Beacon coming up, additional gateways coming up as well. Nidus Worms, though, still popping up pretty much everywhere. 
Scarlet's gonna try and see if she can go ahead and kill that Nexus. And look at the DPS right here of these little bad boys. They do end up killing it. At the same time right now, the Roaches feel brave. A couple of them sneak into the natural. Storm is available here for Neve. Is he paying attention? He is. Uh, a little bit late, though. Backing up right now to watch the safety of those shield batteries. It does look like the Roaches are gonna be able to overwhelm this. Those Oracles from earlier, though, still absolutely fantastic. At the same time, a couple of Zealots. Ugh. Try to get some damage in. Looks like the Prism actually ran over a, um, what's it called? A Spore Crawler there inside of the main base of the Zerk. A couple of Roaches derping around as well. Ugh. Not the cleanest place here by both players. But I'm liking this position here for Neep quite a bit. Alrighty, so Scarlet recognizes the scenario that she's in. She's like, okay, well, the Nidus Worm was fun. The Swarmos were pretty good. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I got 13 of them. I guess I'll, I'll send in more and more of these Locust Waves. But I gotta make a decision right now to transition into something else. The problem is, if you sit around, right, on a bunch of Swarm Hosts, you're gonna be able to max out really quickly. As a matter of fact, we saw Scarlet maxed out just about a minute or two ago. Um, Swarm Hosts are extremely supply inefficient. So they're very, very good. They're very, very valuable, and they gain a lot of value for each... Uh, supply that they that they you know add to the table, but you max out very quickly and when you do I Mean your opponent's army can still grow from there And if it's ever if it's ever gonna be like a 200 200 fight right at, at like a max supply for both players The swarm hosts just get absolutely wrecked so I like the fact here that Scarlet right now recognizes Okay, this Protoss player is not contained on like 140 supply I'm gonna go ahead and make the transition right now to watch her lurker then she's going up towards the hive and I think she's transitioning towards that Hydra Lurker style. Swarm Host. A uh, couple of them would die here and there. They do get an Arkle right now for their troubles, which is great. Every single time these Swarm Hosts kill a unit, they gain value. Because, I mean, the Locusts obviously are free. They're just on a cooldown. Additional Stargates now coming up, though, inside of the main base. And we're setting ourselves up for a nice little macro game here. I like it. Scarlet actually adding on additional Swarm Hosts? Okay. I would have not expected that, to be honest. Whenever I'm in this scenario as Zerk, I always try and, and get out of out of Swarm Host at this point. It seems like such a waste of money. Yeah. I mean, every single time a Storm lands, it's not bad either, right? I guess you want to trade free units to energy. That's, yeah, it's not bad. Alrighty, so here we go. Night is Worm right now coming up at home. Apparently <laughs> Scarlet not feeling all too confident anymore. Putting them any further out into the map. Triple carrier production right now coming up here for Neep. So using that Stargate from earlier once again. Those Oracles, by the way, have been absolutely fantastic. One of them has fallen here, but I mean, they must have gotten... Where are they? Uh, they must have gotten a lot of kills. That's 5 kills and 11 kills. Well, I guess they've bruised up a lot of those Zerk units as well. Either way, the Zerk player right now expanding towards a, uh, a Hydra Lurker based unit composition. Whereas the Protoss is already going up towards a Skytos force. We'll see how that's gonna play out. I don't actually know the dynamic very well right now at this level of play. So it seems to be the case that most Protoss players are not fond of playing late game Protoss versus Zerg. Recently though, well relatively recently that is, we did see a change to uh, the High Templar. They now have one additional feedback range. One of the reasons why um, Protoss kind of falls off in the late game, it seems, is because of the fact that um, the Corruptor Viper unit composition is extremely potent. Basically, you can abduct these, these carriers one at a time and just pick them off, right? Now, if you bring a bunch of High Templar, not only can they storm, if you can feed back the, lo the, the, the Vipers before they actually get there, it's really, really helpful. Once again, nice little move right here by Neep. Forces the Locust to be activated and then backs up and actually messes up one of those force fields. Not ideal. That means now... Ooh, this is painful. Oh my god, I was just complimenting it. Alright. A couple of sentries there end up falling. A couple of those uh, stasis wards also get triggered. The Locusts are still getting something done. I don't mind it. Constant aggression though on all locations of the map it feels like. Both players trying their very best to play their heart out. At this point, Zerk is gonna be at Hive Tech, of course, so Vipers will be coming up, and we do also see a Spire inside of the main base. The first carriers have been spotted. There's four out right now, and obviously, well, Neep is gonna continue upgrading those bad boys as well. He's gonna continuously get more and more research for them. Carriers are fantastic as they, uh, they get more and more attack upgrades in particular. Apparently, the Dark Shrine was produced in the middle of all of this as well, and that's gonna be the weapon of choice right now as well for Neep as it looks like he's sending out a small hit squad for harassment. Now, every single time, though, these Locust 
seem to be spotted. I mean, they still get damage in this. Yeah, this Nexus is dead. No way. He needs to cancel. Oh, no cancel there. That's 400 minerals down the drain. Maybe even a... Oh, no, an Archon or two. Ah, that's painful. Excellent wave right there by Scarlet. Despite the fact that Neep is pretty much maxed out. Still a little bit unfortunate. At the same time, though. Oh, good storms right there. Do come up. We don't have any detection right now, though, for the Protoss player. So Neep needs to be very careful. Those spines keep coming out of the ground. Hello. We need a detector right over here somewhere. Dark Templar inside of the main base does get sniped. Okay, there we go. We do see the Oracle not coming up. Very critical. But at this point, those uh, additional Lurkers have now arrived, and they are in a really, really good spot. Now, one thing Lurkers aren't very good at is shooting up, believe it or not. So, this is why the Skytol's army is approaching. The problem is that the Nexus is already gone, so they finished the job that they came here for. Okay. <laughs> I love the usage right here of the Nidus Worm, though. I'm not gonna lie, we don't really see it being used very often like that. Really fantastic play here by Scarlet. I just want to emphasize how different she, she's playing right now uh, from pretty much all of the other Zerg players out there. And I'm a fan. This is great. So, Protoss is always a little bit limited. Oh, there we go. Good feedbacks. That feedbacking is actually fantastic. Great storms as well. The High Templar, man. Good work. Uh, well, I mean, still a carrier ended up falling there. But I think that was actually a decent enough trade, assuming Neeb can capitalize on this right now. Additional carriers are being produced as well. He wants to be careful, though. If he moves too deep onto the creep, the Zerg can just, you know, accidentally overwhelm him. It's very easy. Locust obviously can still be used defensively as well. There's a lot of storms available. Nidus Worm coming up here in the bottom right hand corner as well. Scarlet has done an excellent job constantly spreading creep everywhere. Despite the fact that that has been denied many a times. Here we go once again. Excellent feedbacks. Ooh, pretty much all of those. Yeah, Vipers right now out of energy. Well, apparently there was enough for one abduct. So I think that means one dead carrier. There we go. Maybe at the, uh, at the cost of a, a dead base though. Not bad whatsoever. Most of that ground army right now for the Protoss is starting to dwindle. And I think that Neep will probably be forced to go back home. I mean, additional Corruptors will spawn here in just a little bit. The Vipers will be able to get energy very easily while they are at home as well. There we go. And this is what I mean. Like, the constant abducting creates incredible value there for the Zerg player. Alrighty, yeah. I think that this was a, a little bit of foresight right there by Scarlet. She knew that the, uh, you know, the fight eventually will probably be fine. So, there we go. This is a scary Locust Wave right now. Moving over right now to the fifth base of the Protoss. Now, already Neep recognizes where those Locusts are going to be coming from. But this is still going to deal damage. You know what? I was critiquing the additional uh, Swarm host at, like, the 10-minute mark earlier. This is starting to look pretty ridiculous. Let's have a look right now at the resources lost. Yeah, Swarmhost and Lurkers are really the only two units that create value for Zerk. So pretty much every other unit composition for Zerk, unless like it's a massive bailing hit, um, they seem to like provide more value for the Protoss, right? So you never really trade supply efficiently. Um, it seems like those two units though have the potential to, uh, to change things very, very rapidly. Anyways, it's very noticeable though, that new uh, feedback range. It certainly makes a difference. Swarm host apparently feeling brave. With that base over here harassed for a little bit. Apparently they're feeling uh, good enough to maybe start going after the third base right now. Guess that's not where the Protoss player is going to expect those Locusts to come from. There we go. The carrier count is growing. So the way carriers get upgraded, by the way, is that every single little interceptor ship benefits from those air upgrades. So when you upgrade one of your... Um, one of your uh, air weapon upgrades or one of your air armor upgrades, especially the weapon upgrades are absolutely fantastic, you upgrade all of those little interceptor ships as well. So that's why these upgrades right now are super critical, right? So we want to continuously see those. I wouldn't even mind seeing a second... Uh, there we go. A second cybernetic score coming up here as well for Neep. I mean, uh, if he could go ahead and, like, upgrade both of those upgrades at once, that would be fantastic. Once again, though, every single time that these Locusts land, they get a little bit of value. We'll just, just kill the Cyber Core. So important. Ah. All right. Not quite gonna happen. I feel like actually going after the Cybernetic Core right now would be absolutely fantastic. I mean, that's one, one little Locust, apparently, that was not manually told to attack something else. But it, it adds up. These upgrades are so terrifying. So I actually checked it out at some point in the LOTV unit tester, which is like a, an arcade game in StarCraft 2. 
um, where you can basically just let random army compositions fight to the death. And you can assign different upgrades to them and all that. And it's it's kind of ridiculous how much these carriers benefit from upgrades. It, it adds up so, so, so very quickly. Alrighty, so let's talk about the dream unit composition for Protoss. Because one of the mistakes that you see quite a bit on the lower end of the ladder um, is players focusing only on Skytos. And Skytos is fantastic, don't get me wrong. You want to have as many of those big ships as you can. But there's a certain limit. You need to make sure you have a bunch of High Templar underneath. So High Templar, like I said, for Sonic Storm, but also for feedback so you can get rid of those Vipers. Very, very critical. So I would say at least like six, maybe even up to eight. I think that's a good number. Um, and then secondly, ideally, you also want to have a couple of Archons underneath these carriers as well. Mothership is coming up now too. Now, I'm not entirely sold on the Mothership. It always seems to just die and, well, that costs 400 minerals and 400 gas. They're not particularly cheap. A little ambitious right there for one uh, Zirkling. Um, regardless, well, this base is just never going to come up. <laughs> Scarlet is doing a fantastic job harassing that and once again, not a cancel. Um, the purpose of the Archons is to prevent the Corruptors from flying over the carriers. So, if you have like your big Protoss ball, right, and you have a couple of Archons underneath, the Corruptors can't just jump on it. Because if you, if you jump with the Corruptors on it, I mean, the, the Archons will just absolutely tear them apart. So, I think Archon Carrier, High Templar, and maybe a Mothership, maybe a couple of Void Rays in there, is an amazing unit composition. That being said, at the professional level, so obviously both of these players are ridiculously good. Um, Skytos is still not as strong as it is on the ladder. At the highest level of play, Zerg players seem to be able to dismantle, uh, seem to be able to dismantle it. Although I haven't seen it much recently, it seems to be the case that a lot of Protoss players. I don't like Tempest at all. I think Tempest are down here, but um, well, finally now we do see the Cybernetic Spore uh, being harassed a little bit. Oh, there we go. Um, at the highest level of play, it seems like Zork is just too good in the late game. That being said, though, I don't actually know if that's really the case. By the way, it was a second Cybernetic Core right now in the back. So it doesn't really matter too much. Killing the Cyber Core at this point, not a big deal. Um, I, I haven't seen any Protoss player really transition towards the late game over the last few months. Protoss has made a whole lot of changes. One of those big changes being as well the uh, improvement to the ranged up, or sorry, the speed upgrade. Um, for the, uh, what do they call the Void Race. So we'll see how this is gonna end up going down. I'm excited. I'm surprised that these Swarmos are still around, man. But they've been, uh, yeah, they've been doing some work. Oof, okay. Looks like another carrier there got abducted. Neep right now adding in a couple of those, um... Oracles as well, so the Oracles can use their Revelation skill, at which point the Tempest can shoot at their maximum range. So Tempest can shoot away significantly further than they can see, so I think that's probably the strategy right now for Neep. He wants to maybe uh, get rid of some of those static defensive structures from the Zerg as well, but look at this. There's already 42 of these units available, these little structures for Zerg that are, uh, well, specialized in killing little interceptors. The more interceptors you kill, the better this is going to be. And look at this. With this forest being added on right now, I don't really see the Protoss player engaging into this anytime soon. Only 46 workers remain. Scarlet is just looking to apparently mine her side of the map entirely. When it comes to the Zerg unit composition, it's still those swarm hosts that are like soaking up... Well, actually, it's 14 swarm hosts. That's like what? That's like half the army supply of the Zerg. Well, not quite, but close to it. It's it's very, very significant. Um, I, I think at some point you have to kind of give them up. But maybe Scarlet is so confident in the Zerg late game unit composition that, you know, as long as she's fighting on creep with a whole bunch of these spore crawlers present, she doesn't even need to have a full army dedicated to fighting. Apparently she can actually dedicate that much supply um, to harassing, which seems a little bit absurd to me, but... I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. So, personally, my problem when it comes to, like, late-game Skytals... When you compare these two unit compositions, right? And I know this is a long-running joke in the StarCraft community. Um, when you compare these two unit compositions... The amount of micro required for Zerg is insane. 
In order to micro this properly, you need about six, seven, eight hundred APM. Like I'm not kidding. In the late game engagements, once these armies inevitably clash, when you're focused on like queens, infestors, vipers, corruptors, making sure your units are in the right spot. But it's this. Oh, that's a huge loss. Uh, it's just yeah, it's not ideal. Uh, whereas for Protoss, I mean, you kind of just tech move and storm. <laughs> Which I know is a very long-running joke. I would actually say, in general, Zerk is the A move race. With Roaches, Ravagers, Zerklings, Banelings. I mean, pretty much all you do is choose the engagement and then you attack move. Um, with Protoss, you need to do so much, like, more, especially earlier on. But as the game goes through the late game stages, Protoss Micro is not that important anymore. Like, as long as you don't overstay your welcome and as long as you storm, right? Um, that being said, I actually think Protoss players would love that to be different. I think a lot of Protoss would love it, or a lot of Protoss players out there would love it if they could go ahead and micro these carriers more than just the tech move. I would love to see, like, an improvement to carriers, I guess, in the sense that they would get more value if you micro them correctly. I think that would be a big improvement, but I already know. Like, it's not like Protoss players at the top level want to be able to just attack, move, and then storm. They want to be able to do more stuff to get more value out of their units, right? And I guess what I'm trying to say is, like... <sighs> the difference between a Diamond League Zerg player microing this army and Scarlet is absolutely massive. The difference between a, a Diamond League Protoss player microing this army and Neeb is not as significant. Does that make sense? I don't want to start the balance debate in the comment section, but I'm just trying to explain, like... How it feels when you play this composition. Well, here we go. Big engagement coming up. We do see the parasitic bomb right there landing on a bunch of this Protoss army. Ugh, a whole lot of the uh, all of these spore crawlers right now are picked up as well. How many High Templar are there? There's a couple High Templar here underneath somewhere. There's six of them. Okay. That's very, very important. At the same time, we do see the swarm host right now pushing forward. Constantly harassing these bases. And it's starting to get a lot of value. At this point, though, Scarlet doesn't really need this location on the map anymore. She is looking to abduct a couple more of those Protoss units. Nicely done. That's not a carrier did. There's a lot of Spore Crawlers somewhere else, though. They're all up here. Okay. I was going to say, I guess I guess she feels confident just having it right over in that location. At this point, Neep is breaking the center of the map. Okay, this is very promising. I haven't really seen that happen. It seems like most of the time, Protoss just gets, like, shut down at the front door of the Zerg. Hmm. Maybe the change to uh, the High Templar is significant enough. Maybe the fact that Scarlet still has like 50 army supply caught up in a bunch of, you know, units that don't really provide much value in the engagement also has something to do with that. This base right now acquired here by Neeb, and that's cool. That's very important. Since he hasn't been able to secure the expansion here on the left-hand side of the map, it's kind of rough. Now, one big problem here. Okay, I just noticed here. I brought them on the screen. Okay, this is a big deal. So, Zerk is completely maxed out, right? Look at this. Plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. Okay, all the Zerk units have their maximum upgrades. For Protoss, there's a couple of upgrades missing. And these are actually super important. Um, Neep, you have so much money. Why are you not getting those upgrades? Once again, the Swarm host hit squad. Can't believe I was critiquing these bad boys earlier. They have been ridiculously powerful. Swarm host MVP, actually. <laughs> I can't believe I was critiquing it earlier. Maybe that's one of the things that uh, that I need to start incorporating in my own play as well. Just feels like you dedicate so much supply to something that doesn't really help you that much. Either way, here we go. Five Void Rays being produced right now as once. Apparently with all of the Interceptors rebuilt, this is the moment where Neep wants to once again go deep onto the creep. Additional Spore Crawlers coming up right now in the center of the map as well. Excellent spreading right there as well by the player from the United States of America, making sure that those Parasitic Bombs don't deal that much damage. A couple of the Oracles added into the mix as well, and that means that the Tempest can start moving forward. They're trying to see if they can pick up one of those Brutes, and that's exactly what they managed to do. Okay. Neep very slowly progresses forward. Ooh, once again, good feedbacks, good storms, but uh, a couple of good abducts there as well. Do kill a few of those Tempests pretty much for free. Oracles now also get killed very, very rapidly. 
Keep in mind, there is... Oh, there we go. There is Neural Parasite available as well for these Zerg units. So maybe some of this Protoss army can just be absolutely neuraled. That being said right now, though, it seems like Scarlet's army is absolutely dwindling. With most of those Protoss units right now activating their Prismatic alignments, these Void Rays are going to be able to deal additional damage to the Corruptors. Scarlet right now backing up towards the safety of the Spore Crawlers. Good fungal growth there as well on top of uh, that Protoss force. And here comes the Zerg army. 16 additional Void Ray, or sorry, Corruptors are coming up to reinforce this army too. Most of the Interceptors have been shut down and now all of the Spore Crawlers are burrowing underneath. This is such a difficult unit composition for Scarlet to micro. She's doing a pretty freaking good job of it. I have seen though players like, like Serral just absolutely dismantle this unit composition and not even make it look close. You can see a little bit of clumping there by Scarlet taking a little bit more damage from Storm. Also just, you know, not really having the cleanest fight there. But if you compare that to like what Protoss does in that late game fight, I, I, I can bet you that Neeb wishes he could do more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, these players are very, very fast, and I'm sure that Neeb could, like, do more, but there's there's only so much you can do. Like, what do you do? You you target fire maybe a little bit? It's like, okay, maybe, yeah. I, I'm not I'm not sold on it. I really think a lot of Protoss players at this level would love to be able to spend another, or like, an additional 100 actions a minute on getting more value out of their Skytol's army, rather than just, you know, attack moving and backing up whenever they need to. Now, obviously, I'm not suggesting, though, that the game has to be, like, perfectly balanced at all of those things, right? Like, I think one of the beauties of StarCraft is the fact that it's asymmetrically balanced. But, yeah, it's just one of the things that, you know, I think about quite a bit. It just feels like Protoss can't do this much, in, or can't do that much in the late game. Like, you need about a gajillion actions per minute to defend in the mid-game as Protoss, but then in the late game, you need, like, a half of that, which feels a little bit lopsided, I guess. I've made the suggestion at some point to get rid of the Mothership and add in Arbiters. Imagine if you could make Arbiters. Not with Stasis, though. Stasis would be way too much in StarCraft 2, but I think Arbiters would be... Uh, well, I guess we have Stasis Traps, but a little bit different. Um, I, I think Arbiters could be really cool. For those of you unfamiliar, they're basically like little mini motherships that have a bunch of spells too. So then you would have multiple spellcasters to control in the late game. That would be cool too, right? I would like to see that tried out. But we'll see. Maybe give them time warps. Little baby time warps. So you can, you know, not just get the mothership abducted and lose it for free. But you can actually get like a whole bunch of the units. And then maybe the late game army of Protoss would be a little bit, you know, more, more powerful. I think that'd be cool. Like, more powerful if controlled properly. Less powerful if not controlled properly. You know what I mean? And I think that's what we're looking for. I think I think that's... I don't know. Anyways, here we go. Here comes... Ooh, yep. Here comes the yoink! Who could recall as well, though. <laughs> I was gonna say, how, uh, how are you gonna get rid of that? Well, apparently that's the way. The, uh, the mothership. Where did it go? I don't know where it went. Oh, I guess it went to the closest by Nexus, huh? That makes sense. Uh, the mothership... Uh, Recall to watch that Nexus after being abducted. The Viper fell as well. It is a slippery slope though, because if you if you buff anything here for Protoss, once again, this is so big, I really wonder what that fight would have looked like if both of those upgrades were done earlier. Um, but um, it's, it's a very slippery slope, because if you buff one thing or you nerf one thing, it can change the entire matchup very quickly. Because I don't think what we want is a game where... You know, Protoss players are sitting back for 30 minutes making their dream composition and just, you know, hardcore turtling every matchup or every match. That would also be very lame, right? So that's, yeah, that's that's like, I guess, the flip side of, of talking about late game improvements for this matchup. It's very easy to create a very lopsided unit composition where uh, if you make it a little bit too strong, all we're going to see is turtling every game. And uh, that's not particularly fun either, right? Like, so it's a slippery slope. I'm no, I'm no game designer, but I think about these things all the time. Some people think about big problems when they lay in bed, trying to fall asleep at night. I think about late game service. <laughs> it's sad. I know. I'm sorry. No, nah, it's okay. It's all right. All right. Now, Zerk has a lot of money. I I'm looking at the resources right now. There's a big bank still available here for Scarlet, and she's adding on more and more of these Spore Crawlers. I guess what she wants is 500 Spore Crawlers in the middle of the map. 
just, you know, spread everywhere. There's 39 of them right now. That is a decent amount, right? I mean, the problem is, and I guess now that we're, we're down this rabbit hole anyway, Zerk doesn't have very good anti-air. I mean, <laughs> there's Hydras, and then there's Corruptors. Those are really your only two units. Scarlet apparently posting uh, a little bit of an emoji. <laughs> She's like, I've been trying to kill your probes all game. Now you just donate them to me? Neep wants to open up some more supply to add on some more stuff that will actually kill things. But yeah, since there's no Scourge or anything like that, Zork doesn't really have the greatest anti-air. You kind of have to do it with, uh, what, these units right over here. Hydras kind of suck in the late game, just get stormed to death. And uh, believe it or not, despite the fact that Blizzard really wants it to be a thing... Oh, well, this is not going to happen, Scarlet. Oh, no, don't do it. Um, what's it called? Microbial Shroud is absolutely... Well, it's trash. Microbial Shroud, the Infestor ability. It certainly does not make up for the Infested Terran. Well, there it is. <laughs> Maybe Scarlet will use it. It doesn't work, by the way, in Spore Crawlers. If Microbial Shroud worked in Spore Crawlers, it might actually be used. Once again, feedback utilized. Uh, Viper got killed there as well, but also a Tempest, which I guess is still a uh, positive EV trait. Here we go. A couple of Banelings added into the mix as well. Now, that's a little bit better. A couple of Locusts also thrown in that direction. Looks like there's only two Swarm Hosts remaining right now, and Scarlet is eventually looking to break this location on the map. Very important. She's just trying to soft contain this Protoss player right now. She knows that at some point he's gonna run out of money. And when that happens, she is still mining and she's gonna be fine. So this mobility right now from Zerk in the late game is also a big, big problem right now for Neep. He doesn't really have a mining base anymore, right? Look at this. All of these mineral patches are out. There's only six probes actually that remain right now. So Neep has got 174 army supply. It's not even maxed out. <laughs> That's crazy. Yo, Neep, you gotta make some units. There you go. Couple of, like, zealots coming up as well. Additional locust will be coming up in just a little bit by these two bad boys. They have 15 and 8 kills, respectively. The heroes of the Zerg Swarm. I'm actually starting to get ner nervous right now for Neep. I mean, he's got a dream unit composition, right? An absolutely fantastic force. The problem is... That with this much static defense everywhere, he can't go anywhere. Like, where is he gonna go? Fight the spore crawlers and lose the uh, the like the interceptors and then run out of money. You gotta keep in mind, all the little interceptor ships cost 15 minerals each. So, yeah. Oh, so painful. Abducting into. Oh, that's painful too. Abducting into the spore crawlers. Not ideal. Now, the Tempest can continue shooting away, I guess, at these units as well. Here's a, uh, a Time Warp as well. Neep making the best of it, but he's completely broke right now. Look at this. Are you seeing this? He's broke. He's making a new base. This is an absolute hit, uh, or absolutely his lifeline right now. Zerklings will check out the right-hand side of the map once again. I wouldn't mind seeing Scarlet take this expansion. There is a small hit squad, though, of Protoss units moving in that direction, too. Every single time, though, an interceptor ship dies, it's gonna be something that Neeps need to, uh, Neep needs to rebuild. So, I don't even know if it's worth building a Nexus when you only have eight workers. Apparently, he did make some new ones, which is kind of funny. Um, yeah. What about disruptors? I've wondered about this in the past. What about disruptors to blow up the spark crawlers? We don't really see that too often, but I feel like it wouldn't be a terrible idea. Scarlet, though. Tightening the noose. She uh, is slowly suffocating this Protoss player. And while apparently it takes close to 40 minutes, we're getting to the point where... Uh, well, let's not take that analogy any further. <laughs> that could get real fog, real real, uh, real graphic real quick. <laughs> but, yeah, like, it's, it, it's not gonna happen. I'm sorry, Neep fans. I don't see this army waltzing over that of the Zerg. There's gonna be a big clash. Because obviously Neep isn't going to go down without a fight, but he cannot reproduce anything. Well, here we go. Apparently, this is the moment that Neep was waiting for. Maybe with a perfect engagement, and maybe with a little bit of Miss Micro, it can still be done. Once again, good recall right there. Looks like the Mothership will be able to get it out of there. And you know what? Neep does manage to break most of this location here. Once again, some good abducts coming up as well. Ooh, you know what? No. 
What? Really? Right now, all of the money that Neep has is being spent on interceptors, which is just not ideal. There's the mothership once again being abducted. This time around, there's nothing to recall because it's a pretty long cooldown. Here we go. Oh, Neural Parasite being utilized here by the Zerg player as well. Additional Corruptors are coming up right now too. And with most of that Protoss army on the ground gone, apparently the Corruptors can now finally dive on top of all of these Protoss units. Now a little bit of Miss Micro here though by Scarlet. Scarlet is leaving all of these carriers at like one health. That's a big miscontrol. Oh my god, no way. No, 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 no way. Yeah, she left so many of those carriers with like one health. Uh, well, I mean, that's one way to win. If your uh, Zerk opponent has impeccable macro, but uh, not the cleanest micro, uh, <laughs> that's that's one way to win. That being said, <laughs> Protoss doesn't have any money. They're still broke. Looks like most of the Interceptor ships were rebuilt, but there's another Spore Crawler for us right over here. Reinforcing Corruptors are coming up. Scarlet is now also broke though. Scarlet actually doesn't have that much uh, that much gas anymore. Yeah, she's now finally taking that base on the right hand side. I think she should have taken that one a little while ago. Here come the Corruptors again for wave two. Jumping on all of these carriers and this time around it looks like they are gonna be able to clean things up. GG is cold. And despite the fact that this was ridiculously close in the end regardless of what Protoss did. Scarlet does end up winning. Game number one. Alrighty! Now, despite the fact that that was a ridiculously long first game, um, this is a best of three series. <laughs> so here we go, game number two. We find ourselves on the map Death Aura. Let's see if Neep can, uh, can keep it together after playing a 40 minute long game. Where, uh, well, yeah, that was actually surprisingly close. I think it was primarily due to Scarlet's miscontrol though in the late game. Like she has a really strong macro, amazing creep spread, but the micro can be a little bit more shaky, especially in those massive battles. Now, I can't blame her though, by the way, like I just want to emphasize that microing that unit composition is so ridiculously hard. Oh my god, Scarlet not even trying to take the natural. She just sent that drone straight to the third base. Um, it's so incredibly hard to control that perfectly. And when you watch someone like Serral do it, it's just insane. Like, they make it look so easy and it makes it, uh, or he makes it look like it's such a broken unit composition um, that nobody even dares going late game against against Serral. Um, yeah, even even at this high of a level, there's still a, a noticeable difference when it comes to late game control between top level players. Now, I'm curious to hear, like, your thoughts on, like, late game Protoss versus Zerk in the comment section down below. I can imagine there's gonna be some people that are like, Protoss, so weak, buff Blizzard, Blizzard, please. Um, there, there's gonna be a bunch of comments like that. They always are there, right? Like, they probably didn't watch the video until this point, so... Or maybe they did, and they're now frantically deleting their comment to uh, not get shamed. Uh, <laughs> that being said, I would, I would love to have, like, a, you know, an actual, like grown-up discussion <laughs> about such things in the comment section. I would love to see that. Because because what you, what you got to keep in mind, right, is if you change anything, like I said, it's a very, very slippery slope. It's a very thin line to walk. Because if you buff any units, right, say you make the carrier a little bit stronger, right, or you make the Tempest a little bit more range, or you make the High Templar a little bit better, or you improve the Archon, what, whatever, right? If you improve any of those things, the end result will be that Protoss is sending back every single game and they never, ever attack. Um, that's not really something to aspire to either, and I don't think that's a particularly fun matchup to watch. So it's it's a slippery slope. I think there's a bunch of things that, that this matchup could use. And while I'm no expert, it does feel like Protoss is always a little bit limited. Now, once again, despite the fact that, uh, that Scarlet has the name or the clan tag adapted in, uh, in her, uh, her nickname right over here, it is once again gonna be that Stargate opener from Neep. So, uh, yeah, sticking to, you know, apparently his bread and butter. This is something he played for many years, and he's sticking to it, despite the fact that all the Korean Protosses, like Stats and Zest and, you know, Parting and all those players, they've been very, very, very happy playing that, uh, that uh, Twilight Council opener. Well, this time around, not going to be the case right here for uh, Neep. Now, I like this, actually. I was wondering about that pylon here. All the way in the back of the natural. Yeah, look at this. Scarlet right now is looking around the main base and she's trying to fit. Okay, well, if the. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of sloppy. Alright, uh, well, if the Zerg. Oh, yeah, there we go. 
If the Zerkling can go all the way to the natural, I guess it's fine, right? Uh, the problem is, most of the time, this very first... Um, Zerkling, or sorry, this very, uh, this very second? Yeah, I guess very second can work. Uh, most of the time, that second pylon is gonna be planted inside of the main base. And if Scarlet wouldn't have found it, she probably would have expected it to be a proxy. So she probably would have started looking around these locations right here on the map to make sure that, uh, you know, there weren't any cheeky protal structures coming up at that point. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, quite, quite surprised right there that Neep actually let that Zerkling live for that long, because that was, like, one Zerkling that made it there for, like, three trips around the main base. Anyways, it is gonna be that Oracle Adept opener, so I like this, actually. So, probably what we'll see right here from, uh, Neep is a triple Oracle, or a dual Oracle, we'll see. He already did go for the one Phoenix to get rid of any of that scouting for Zerk, at least in the form of Overlords. Um, he can definitely go for a nice little push here and then expand behind it. St what? Okay, I'm confused. Never mind. I know nothing about this matchup. Oh, what? Wait, so this is indeed an adept push, I think. Probably like five adepts. Hmm, maybe not actually. Maybe it's just gonna be like three adepts defending a third base straight into, I guess, carriers? Tempests? I don't know. Second Stargate here, and then also a uh, Fleet Beacon. That's crazy. Hmm. Maybe Neep uh, still a little bit stuck in the mindset of that previous game. Feels like this is the way to play this one out. I have not seen something like this in a very long time. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Going for the little stasis ward there. As the queen drops back down to the ground. She's gonna be uh, stuck in stasis for like 30 seconds. I guess this, oh my God, it is double, what? Two base carrier? What year is it? Huh? Okay, Um. Uh, this is so strange. Is he gonna go for the plus one upgrade here as well? I hope so. That would be sick. This is something though that Zerk players can scout out relatively easily. So maybe you don't actually wanna show it. The adepts get pick up, or picked up once again for completely free. There's a quick plus one melee coming up here as well for Scarlet, and only just now is when she's starting up that lair. Bailing Nest will be spotted, and well, this is a nice important scout here for Neep. This shows that everything is A-OK, -okay, right? This shows that the Zerk player is not looking to get aggressive anytime soon. If this was a Roach opener, I don't know if that would be better or worse for the Zerk. Regardless, third base is gonna finish up here for the Protoss player, and the first carriers are out. Is Neep gonna just rally them straight across? Oh, wow. I thought he was gonna, like, rally them over here and just, like, hang out in the corner and then show them as, like, ta-da, surprise! Bet you didn't expect these big boys. Uh, this right now is gonna give Scarlet the heads up that she needs to start up a, uh, Spire here pretty soon. Now, she's doing a fantastic job defending so far, by the way. Only one worker going down up to this point. Fourth base coming up. Still, with that one Phoenix from earlier killing up, uh, or killing those overlords that were out on the map and the Zerklings right now pushed back. These are only gonna be spotted right now. She's like, what the? <laughs> what are you doing? What is this? Spire starts up immediately. Uh, a couple of spore crawlers are coming up as well. A couple additional spore crawlers. I guess this is the Protoss hit squad to go after the fourth hatchery of the Zerg. What a strange, strange opener. All right, here come the queens. There's six queens here in total. They're trying to see if they can kill the Interceptors. Not really possible to, uh... Oh my god, they do have energy. No, no, don't, don't tell me that that base actually lives. I don't think so. Nah, 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 it's dead. It's dead. This actually is pretty important. In the meantime, though, two hatcheries, like the Hydra's head, popped up on the other side of the map. You kill one of them, guess what? Couple more will spawn. Um... Hmm. So what's the point gonna be? Oh, oh, okay. So this is four carriers. Hmm. Okay, I think this is four carriers into Blink Stalker. Because right now, when you think about it, Zerk is gonna make the transition towards Corruptors. They kind of need it because Hydra suck, like I talked about, you know, plenty already. Um. Uh, is this? This is weird. I've not seen this before. I like it though. A little bit more harassment, carrier harassment. They think they're battle cruisers. This is working really well. If this would have been a blind spire, though, like I pointed out in game number one, right? A lot of Zerg players right now are fond of going, you know, quick lair into spire. Uh, 
These these would have been toast. There we go. Corruptors are coming up. Carriers are being recalled all the way back towards the third base. Where they're going to be able to replenish their shields and rebuild their interceptor count. Alright. Now Blink is going to finish up here. How many gateways are we on? We're on nine gateways. Alright, that's a lot. Um... I think Neep is going to go for an all-out assault with Blink Stalker. Four carrier Blink Stalker. What in the world are we seeing here? <gasps> I like it. Neep. Normally not the player with the cheeky build orders. Apparently is going to be the one with the cheeky build orders and Scarlet still does not know it. She starts up 12 drones. Yeah, this is very weird. Normally when you go up against someone who's opening up carriers, it's gonna be one of those games where Protoss is sitting back for 30 minutes. You know, like the one we basically just saw. Not because they wanna be sitting back, but because they kinda have to, right? In this instance though, it's a, a Blink Stalker transition. There we go, Blink right now, shown for the very first time. Carriers killing whatever they can. Plus one just finished as well, 40 Stalkers. That's good, that's ground weapons level one. Bailing speed is not done yet, but plus one melee is, so that's actually quite important here for the Zerg player. If she can get a good wraparound here with these Stalker, or on these Stalkers, that would be fantastic. Right now, ooh, most of those Corruptors are gonna be out of the sky. The hatchery finally falls. Neep purposely not killing that one until the very final second, until we can take control of this high ground. And, well, it's gonna be Lings and Banes that will be forced to now clean up these Carriers and Stalkers. This is a cool build. Don't know if it's good, but it's cool. It works really well in this series. <laughs> Can't imagine this. this isn't necessarily the build you want to play on the ladder, though, because you might just accidentally run into a guy who is going... So oh my god, beautiful force fields as well. Oh, second line of force fields once again, but you might run into the guy who's going straight into a spire. And there we go. GG is called perfect force fields there by Neep. <sighs> that means that we're going to game number three. Alrighty, so here we go. Game number three, the final map in this best of three series is Everdream. I love that opener from Neep. Don't think he can pull it off a second time though. That would be that would be a little bit crazy. Maybe go for Adept now. Can't believe it if we if we actually have a best of three series at this point in the meta, where the Zerk player is not going for you know, or for the rather the Protoss player is not going for a single Adept opener. I wouldn't be surprised. Well. It's a ZVP though, it's probably going to be the same opener once again. Scarlet sending out a drone at 100 minerals, straight to the third base, not even bothering. She knows fully well that this Protoss player loves sending out that probe towards the natural. It's not even worth trying to take it. What might be worth it though is going pool first. Alright, just go pool first. Eh. I guess pool first is still uh, not preferred against this kind of stuff. Now, Neep, not really the kind of pl Protoss player, by the way, to go for any kind of cannon rush or maybe a proxy gateway or something along those lines. Not really something uh, he does very regularly, although, I mean, I can't imagine putting down a pylon over here a couple of gateways. This third base is dead. The main base is gone, too. Alright. Gateway coming up on the low ground. Gas was taken here as well. A 20 supply. We'll see that Nexus coming up here on the low ground. Cutting a little bit of pro production right now is Neep. And then uh, he should be going for the cybernetics core here as a follow-up very shortly as well. There we go. So usually you build those both at 20 supply. There we go. Good positioning there as well. One structure will complete that wall off. There's room for one unit to stand in the middle of these two structures to prevent the Zerklings from running in. Protoss is a very unforgiving race though. It's so easy to accidentally lose. I think there's this weird notion in the StarCraft community from like the early days maybe of SC2 where every Protoss was just doing, you know, the four gate or, <laughs> you know, those really stupid builds. Um, it's, uh, it's still kind of there right now as well, but Protoss is by no means the easier race to play. Like a lot of people still say that and I disagree so much. I think the people that say that Protoss is easy to play probably suck at StarCraft. Like, I guess at this point, I've been talking for like an hour, right? At this point, the only people watching this are the ones that are hardcore committed to the series. Seriously though, like the people that still... It's kind of once again be a Stargate opener. I, I feel like once again, uh, the people that, that, you know, say Protoss is easy have just never really played Protoss at a decent enough level. Because it's so brutal. There's so many small things that might just accidentally lose you the game. 
If you miss position a sentry at some point, or you don't have a unit in hold position, or you, like, put your pylon in just slightly the wrong spot, it's just game over. It's it's just so brutal. Anyways, no adept openers in this series. What's a, there we go. Nothing whatsoever. Scarlet wants to double check there. She checks, and uh, she knows now that it is going to be that. Uh, oh, this is good. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, she now knows that it is going to be a... Uh, a Stargate opener once again. Phoenix coming up first. Now, she is committing a lot into the scouting though, right? So this could be two overlords going down and then also a couple of Zerklings. That is a big commitment just to figure out that it's a Stargate. I'm personally a bigger fan of just making the Spore Quadros blindly. But I guess that can be disastrous against like uh, other two base openers, especially against Adepts. Phoenix into Oracle. Should Neep have gone after this overlord first? I think so. Probably could have grabbed that one. Two adepts though in the meantime. Running around the main basis of the Zerk. And so far actually the Zerk player has been slowing down a lot. I wasn't quite paying attention to that. But this has been uh, a successful bit of harassment so far. Scarlet only at 28 workers right now. Which is not a lot. Neep just simply uh, happily utilizing his Chrono Boost there on the next side. Which is fantastic. Third gas is coming up here. Hmm. What do you need a third gas for? I actually didn't notice him doing that in the previous games. Pretty sure he took the third and the fourth at the same time. So maybe he's got a little bit of cheekiness up his sleeve once again. Needs to start looking though for a third base here shortly. Or it could once again just be a massive Blink Stalker play. That's actually become pretty popular as well. So Blink Stalker is one of those builds that can absolutely gain value over time. If you can prevent creep spread, it's it's really powerful. But here it is. Okay, never mind, guys. Remember when I said it wasn't going to be any adept openers? It will be a glaive adept opener. It's just going to be a delayed one, which is even like cheekier. Is that even a word? More cheeky? I don't know. Uh, it's it's like even more silly because this is going to be at the at the point where you no longer expect it. So. Scarlet knows it's a Stargate opener, but we normally never see Scarlet, or sorry, Stargate into uh, into Adept pushes. Very odd. Most of the time it gets followed up with, like, say, for example, an Archon drop or Dark Templar or something like that. I mean, I guess that this is, like, pretty relatable, right? Pretty similar. It's just that um, this, this build is risky, because if your opponent ends up going Mass Roach, and they just go for a ton of roaches, or a ton of units here in general, which seems to be the thing that Scarlet is doing right now. She's making a ton of Zerklings. Got the Baneling Nest coming up here as well. They can go in for the counterattack as soon as they shut down your Adepts. So, I, I'm a little bit... I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I like this position all too much here for Neep. A couple of Banelings can change the title battle really quickly. Now, if this would have been a plus one melee opener like Scarlet did in game two, I would have liked this a lot better. Now, obviously, she's not going for that plus one melee opener because, well, we saw how that worked in game number two. It was a little bit too expensive, a little bit too committed, and that Spire was just a little bit too late. Here we go, though. The Banelings looking for the juicy connection. Oh, well, so far, excellent splits right there by Neep, pretending to be a Terran player, apparently. Splitting those adepts on creep. I like this as well, actually. The one Stasis Ward over here at least attempted. Once again, another Shade coming up right now. And despite the fact that this will likely get cleaned up eventually, this was still an awful lot of Zerklings that ended up going down there. Yeah, not a bad trade, actually. A couple of Banelings also fell there. They don't really show up there, but you can see the amount of gases. Uh, or the amount of gas, rather, that has been lost. Very nice. All right. Don't know if that counts really as an adept opener, no. I, I guess it does, technically speaking, but not really what people think. Of. Oh my god, no! <laughs> this is what I said earlier! Don't do it! Oh, Guess it's only a couple of Zerklings and it's not the three minute mark, but that is still a little bit silly. Recall being utilized as well, but sadly, no energy for uh, recall inside of the main base. Oracle inside of the main would have been really helpful. Only a handful of probes end up going down there, so that was... You know, crisis averted, I guess. Nicely done, but <laughs> I don't think Neep is done yet. Additional gateways coming up. You gotta bring the grand total up to eight, which is oftentimes what we see when Protoss wants to go for... Okay, never mind. That's gonna be ten! Ten gateways. That's oftentimes not what we see if Protoss wants to go for a macro build. That's oftentimes what we see if Protoss wants to go for a three base all-in. Quite surprised there's not at least a couple of gateways right over here. 
you know, I've seen a lot of Banelings rolling through this little section of the map into the mineral line. That would have been not, uh, not a bad idea, especially with Baneling speed now coming up. Spire, though, once again built. And maybe this is like a reactive Spire as well, judging off of the previous couple of games. Scarlet is like, you know what? Not going to happen again. <laughs> I'll make sure to defend against it no matter what this time around. Fourth base is done now for the Zerg player. She's stuck on Roach Ravager, Ling, Bane right now, which is a fantastic unit composition. Stuck maybe has a negative connotation, but it's very, very powerful. Alrighty. Links, Banes, and Ravagers. Question is, though, how are those 10 gateways going to do? Well, there's actually a fourth Nexus coming up. That's a lot. Hmm. Okay. Templar Archives here as well, so probably Archons here in a little bit. Will there be Mutas? I guess there might be Mutas here in a little bit. As uh, the Spire was spotted, despite the fact... And I like this. This is a small move, but it's actually really cool. So you notice there those Overlords being positioned? The Overlords are not just arbitrarily hanging around this gas, guys. They're trying to obstruct the view of the Spire there. Which can actually uh, be very helpful against, you know, weaker Protoss players that may not be scouting super deliberately. There we go. Neep did see it. He knows that it's there. That's why uh, a couple of the spores were indeed built. Force field? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. You see that? Neep actually lifted one of those sentries into the prism to actually be in range there to force field. It's a small move, but that was sexy. I like it. Anyways, the uh, Photon Cannons are already built inside of the Mineral Line, so Mutas, I mean, they're being built at this point as well. I don't really like it. Yeah, this is why Gateways over here would not be bad. Maybe maybe Neep can still add on a couple of Gateways here in just a little bit. Nine Mutas at this point in the game. Eh. Not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan. Scarlet did get the High Yield Vespian Geyser. And she's actually going to go very heavy into the Mutas, I think. This is not just a small harassment squad that we see so often. A fifth base was acquired just for the Muta production here. So, yeah, she's going to go hardcore into the Mutas. Alrighty, let's see how that goes. Always feels like a bit of a gamble to me, but... The problem with Mutas is that they can't really take head-on fights very well, but they're fantastic for harassment. So I think what Scarlet probably looks to do here is just avoid this Protoss army. Just don't fight it. There's no reason. Just go around it instead. Massive stasis ward over at the third base actually slows down a lot of these probes. Uh, or rather, Bane Links from advancing. In the meantime, Muda's right now instead of the main base. And even though there was defense built, this is not actually that good. At the same time, though, a lot of Zealots here on the right-hand side. A couple of Zealots now in the main base as well. Looks like the Protoss army is chasing down the Zerg at every corner. And now, yep, with these Bane Links finishing up, you see how many hits one Archon can take? Absolutely fantastic defense once again by Neeb. Only loses a handful of workers here in the grand scheme of things and kills a single hatchery right there on the right hand side of the map too. He's looking to potentially get another kill right here on the hatchery in the center. These Archons make it impossible for the Mutas to actually engage that army. But I guess what the Mutas are really good at is indeed harassment. Look at that. Finally, the workers now are starting to drop like flies. Additional uh, static defense now built inside of the main or into the center, I guess, of the map here too. Scarlet is not going to be able to fight this Protoss army, though. So this is going to become a very chaotic game very, very quickly. Neep right now overwhelming this, this natural expansion for the Zerg. There's really not much that Zerg can do right now to reinforce. New base acquired in the top left-hand corner. Scarlet predicting the base race right now. And I think she's right. Protoss knows that if he decides to go home, these Mutas are going to fly him around. There are a couple of Archons, though, inside of the main base, and that's important! Okay, we do see... Oh, Magic Boxing spreading around all of these Mutas to try and mitigate some of that splash damage of those Archons. Looks like there is going to be enough Zerg here in the end to clean up those few units inside of the main base. Excellent defense. Once again by Neep attempted, but there just wasn't enough. Third base, though, of the Zerg in a lot of trouble. Natural expansion is gone, and with that, the Spire couple of Zerklings inside of the main base, thinking about potentially engaging this army, but the Zealots would be making very quick work of them. Okay, 16 probes did sneak on out of there. They are right now moving across the map. Couple of the Mutas inside of the natural, couple of Mutas inside of the main base. They're gonna go after every single Nexus that the Protoss player has right now to reveal where those, uh, those Protoss structures are gonna be. So that natural expansion will go down as well. Main base probably in a little bit of trouble too. Zerklings right now get the wraparound, actually, on two Archons. That's nice. 
Zerklings also will be able to clean up the Zer or the Zealots inside of the main base. And I like this splitting up a lot. Ooh, now this is important. Okay, Neep knows where the final base is at. Excellent scouting right here by the player from the USA. Only a couple of Zerg structures remain. Now remember, the actual win condition for StarCraft 2 is to destroy all of your opponent's structures. Base in the top left-hand corner is gone. Main base still lives. Couple structures over there as well. I'm switching over to the structures tab here in the top left-hand corner so you can see how this base race is going. You don't need to kill the creep tumors, but it's a, uh, uh, you know, a spawning pool and a, and, a, and a lair. That's not that much. Zerk does still have some money in the bank, so excellent work right there uh, by Scarlet. She pretend or she, she knew that this was likely going to happen. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a hatchery right now coming up in the bottom right-hand corner. Neep doesn't know... That there is a base there. A couple of additional probes end up going down here as well. At this point, since the Protoss player is revealed, all of those uh, structures, you know, are visible right now for Scarlet through the Fog of War. So this is exactly what she sees right now. She's trying to see if she can kill all of those structures before Protoss gets the kill. Now, obviously, Protoss uh, kills the main base here of the Zerk. But it's so predictable, right? I mean, when your previous expansion was in the top left, bottom right-hand corner makes the most sense. Now, look at this. Already, Scarlet is setting herself up to cancel this expansion, potentially, and then go for the base in the top left-hand corner. But obviously, in the meantime, she is gonna need something, like an extractor, for example, uh, to, uh, to keep that all alive. Otherwise, she just loses. Ooh, a couple drones actually fall. There's only three drones right now remaining. Scarlet! Oh my god, I think that's game, isn't it? She can maybe start up a, a gas. Hello. I think you need to start up a gas here very shortly. Okay, I think she's just... Where's she going? Where's she going? Where's she going? Where's she going? No! <laughs> I think she probably wanted to cancel that hatch and then replant the hatchery elsewhere. But obviously you can't do that because you then have no structures remaining. <sighs> that was so much closer than it needed to be there. Oh, I actually don't know what would have happened here if... Uh, hmm, Protoss had one probe. I'm not sure. I think that Nee probably still had that because he could kind of split up his units. But then again, obviously, he couldn't know that he could kind of split up the units, right? So that, that, that would have been a gamble. So despite that amazing game number one, where the Protoss player sadly ended up losing, it is going to be Neep that comes out ahead in this best of three series. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for your generosity. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.